and welcome to part two of um, coin rings and making jewellery rings. Uh, this particular part is going to be of me attempting to make a half crown ring. Now I made it loads and loads in the past and I got better and better until they turned out pretty much perfect. I don't know how these are going to turn out. I haven't done it for over two years and when I got my milling machine everything went by the wayside and I started doing things on the milling machine which has got nothing to do with making rings uh, but I hope you like the content and I, I, I'm attempting just to make one ring so let's see what happens okay guys into the video Uh, 1947 I think it's a George one so we're going to punch it through there oh maybe not maybe I'll punch it that way but then push it that way. I want to push the ring through that way. But I think if I... Yeah, if I rest it on that die, I could mark it, couldn't I, that side of the ring. So if I put it with the head that I'm not bothered about marking down, and this is the other half the fly punch we're going through with. So what's the first thing we do is wax it up. Don't need to be tight. Marking that just right. See what we get. We've gone through far enough.
Right, so I've taken the punch out and you can see now that that's guaranteed to be absolutely dead centre. Just using a V-block to pack it up a bit so I don't have to extend the ram too far. Got both our pushers, there's that one and that one. high enough up I'm going to stall there and I'm going to lift the camera so you can maybe see down what's happening but right, that's the best I can get Okay, that's annealed. Right, so that's where I went wrong. I didn't press it enough in the. Let's turn this round because that light is. Uh, it's the daylight coming in through a window. So we've now pretty much got a parallel ring, albeit it's split there, so it's no good. But it's a learning curve, and as I say, I was doing quite a lot of these rings. At, at one time for presents for people um, and I tried to get the date of birth on them you know some older lads like myself and uh, <coughs> and I say I haven't done them for a while and that has split yeah no good that's jiggered but you can see the theory of how I do them that's nearly parallel there we go, that'll fit in that die now. I'll press it down some more, but I'll do it, but I'm wasting my time. Well, that's pressing a bit better. <clears throat> what I did, and I think I forgot to do right at the beginning, was when I punched the hole, 
I didn't anneal the coin. In fact, I suppose I should anneal it before I started, because I don't know how hard that coin is. So I've annealed it. I pressed it a bit. I annealed it again. And I'm going to anneal it again. nice and flat it were all wavy before so that's been annealed three times so that's just we're using the um, dies that's how far we've got it which I think is a lot further than I had before do I kneel it again it's not cracking anywhere it, and it's so soft it's it's going dead easy so I'm um, I'm inclined to possibly anneal it one more time and then start stretching it on ring stretcher. So No splitting this time. Try and get it down enough so it'll go in that die. Suppose I could do what I did before. I'm getting nearer. Right, it'll go in that die now. See if I can. shape a bit
that has gone out of shape. Just there, look. It hasn't flared enough there. Right, so we've, yeah, we've got our barrel look. Curved. Half crown, 1967. And then all the way up, fid, def. And what we've got there is we've got the top of the crown look. Because we've pressed it that way around. Yep. And we should have the other half there, which is actually the bottom of the crown. So 
so that's just a, a rough polish because <clears throat> I'm now going to black it focusing on what else fit deaf but yeah it's not perfect as I say it's a couple of years since I dabbled in this and I've no doubt if I started making them again I'd get better and better until I got them pretty much perfect again but never mind Okay, so after making a terrible mess of the first one and not such a bad second one I remembered a lot of things I'd forgotten in two years first thing was stage one anneal the coin I never did I just drilled and uh, punched it and started pressing it mistake number one so let's rectify that now. annealed done it not my torch off as well right I'll go over to the bench and sort this out
Right, that's as far as I can go. So, using the pushers, that's as far as I can go. This is going to have to be finished off now on that stretcher. Because I can't get that... that you see that, that taper in there is now the same as the taper of the dolly. The die, if you like. Okay, we'll move camera. We'll make a start on trying to make it into a parallel ring. I suspect the camera missed a beat there. So what we've got to do is get the ring to look something like that. From like that. Still in shape, sort of. Don't know if you're counting how many times have I nailed this. I can't really see it glowing, but let me turn the light out <coughs> and you'll see it glow. Sure, it's not starting to split, which it's not.
Right, I'm going to just give it a push in this die. Because these dies down here aren't quite big enough. Just yet. Till I get that down a bit more. Yeah, it's still massive, look. Won't be a second. So we're getting there. Okay, so what I aim for with these half crowns is to make a barrel, make it barrel shaped. And I think we're just starting to create that. It's pushing that way. <clears throat> yeah, I've just about got that. That's not bad, really. I've got a lot of file out inside to get rid of this serrated rim. I think I'm going to call this
so that's the one we did last no before last the last one's still in the uh, solution don't seem to be colouring up very well <coughs> No, and that's hot water that we're with. No, it's not doing anything. Yeah, it's turned out quite nice that one. So that's that one and the previous one is that one. But on reflection, to be honest with you, it isn't that bad. You can go on and on with them so you get them absolutely perfect. As I say, I'm very rusty from not doing any for a couple of years. And if you decide to have a go at doing them, you'll just get better and better as you go along. Probably make a few mistakes at the beginning and uh, just get better and better as you go along okay thanks for watching guys we'll do an outro and that's done Well guys, that's the end of making uh, coin rings. Uh, yeah, partly successful, reasonably successful. As you saw the first one I did, I didn't anneal it before I started. Forgot all about doing that when I was doing them a couple of years back. Forgot all about annealing the coin before I started. And I didn't anneal it enough. You can't anneal uh, the coins when you're working with them enough because you're pulling and stretching when you think of how you stretch them things you wouldn't think it would be possible to do would you unless you actually saw it with your own eyes um, a lad I used to know uh, a lad called Randy he made one of, he used to use a piece of steel bar and tap it around a piece of steel bar uh, I don't know how he did it it was a piece of bar and a mallet I think looked really good when he'd done them but with all these tools I've shown you in part one so yeah the second one wasn't bad but it could do with some more work on it not wrong with it it just wants some more work on it I've got the barrel effect see with half crown rings they're so thick that it's nice if you can get a, a barrel on them a crown if you like on them they, they look better than being dead parallel uh, and the last one I made was far more successful the only thing that wasn't was the liver of sulphur to blacken them. Uh, I, I can't weigh out why that don't work because the first ones I did, but I said a couple of years ago, it probably goes off that stuff. So it absolutely stinks awful. It's like a dozen rotten eggs plus a cat's had a go on them. It absolutely honks. Really does. Garage stinks of it. But luckily I'm going in in a minute. So thanks for watching this part two of making coin rings and as I've said in the intro of part one we'll be doing in part three uh, some rings on the lathe which uh, probably might interest people more than doing the coins. Uh, 
we'll try some different ones. I don't know whether to I go through that wood that I showed you and uh, call it a little strip of wood because they were semi successful but not hundred successful when I when I did them originally. The only one that was was the one that I shown you in palm wood, but that's uh, a bought a bought ring blank that screws apart, and you cut your your blank out of your piece of palm wood with hole saws and then you slide it over and bond it on and then you screw the end cap on so you've got the complete ring that's a bit cheaty isn't it really the ones I'm talking about doing with little strips of wood you actually make your ring on the lathe uh, and then put your, your wood round it you only need a couple of turns but the, the art of it is to get it below the surface as far as you can so the groove's got to be as deep as you can get it without the ring being too fat and uh, I'm going on about part three really shouldn't be but uh, you super glue a dab on it and then hold it and then when you let go you've got a piece of wood of whatever it is you've picked actually in the ring deep in it very interesting and then I go with my super glue and that's your, uh, the reason when I explain my Myford lathe to everybody why I've got that to be able to run so slow you will see that in part three, why I put it in back gear and I use about two hertz, two and a half hertz and it goes around so slow, but you'll watch and I'll explain why and what we're doing. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, and I say this every time, if you do subscribe, you'll get to find out when I do part three plus any other videos in the future. Thanks for watching, at least give us a thumbs up and maybe comment, you know, if you've made some of these and you've made them better, show me how, tell me how, because, you know, I'm an amateur. I'm just dabbling in my shed. Something to do in my retirement. Thanks, guys. Bye.